I want to encourage you, lean in, take down notes. If you're here only, you're just going to walk out the same way you walked in. But if you take down notes, if you go back and reapply the notes, your retention rate goes way, way up. Pastor Jeremy mentioned on the video that we have a special guest. And I'm fired up because somebody that's on our team, she's a gift to the house. She's actually a gift to me personally. She loves families and marriages. That is actually the field that she operates in as a counselor. And she flows in a gift of wisdom that is absolutely incredible. So when Pastor Jeremy called me and said, man, I need you to be a part this weekend, I said, well, I'm gonna bring out the best gift that I've ever been given, my beautiful wife. Can you give it up for Jackie Groves? Let's go. I love you, my name. Amazing. All right, so we're gonna have a seat. We're gonna have a conversation. And this is gonna be incredible. This is next level. Give it up for the team. Thank y'all. My goodness. Hey, hey everybody, how's it going? Good to see you all today. I am so excited to be here with you all. I am Jackie. By the way, you've probably just heard of me for yes. some of you. But for those of you that have never seen me, here I am in the flesh. Well, mo <laughs> most people thought you were Photoshopped. Because they would see you on the screen, they'd be like, this can't be real. And I always say that you married me for my money. Um, <laughs> or my looks. I have one of them left. That's up to you guys to dis decide. Okay. So, <laughs> Jackie's not only beautiful, but she is brilliant. And I said this a moment ago, but uh, she does have her master's degree in counseling. Works with a lot of families, premarital and marriages. And uh, it's pretty incredible watching what God has done throughout the years. And so I'm excited. I'm fired up for this weekend and I'm excited that you're a part of what we're doing. I'm gonna slide back towards you. Come closer, darling. Right, let's go. We are excited because this particular relationship series is titled Strings Attached. Yeah. And the thing we love about that is that there is no way of getting around the fact that there are strings attached in relationship, right? Can I get an amen? Anybody? Yeah. Amen. And we are talking in this series about the tangles, the knots, and the blind spots of relationships. And today we are going to jump in and dive into the blind spots that you can find in the three different areas of relationships. So a blind spot. When you think about a blind spot, the first thing I think about is that section in the back of your car. Anybody know what I'm talking yeah. about? It is the area in which the, you, you just can't see what you don't know that you can't see, right? right. So a blind spot in a relationship is an area that maybe you don't have the clearest vision of, and maybe you don't even know that you, can, you don't have the best vision on it. So we're gonna cover some blind spots today, and then we're gonna give you guys some goals to walk away with to help you counteract those blind spots and hopefully get to a really great, healthy place in your relationships. And we're gonna tell stories, we're gonna have fun, but the thing about this series that's amazing, and I wanna encourage you, be a bringer, Share it online, invite people to every week. This is week one of four incredible weeks and the content is gonna be rich and there's gonna be a lot of depth and we believe supernaturally there's gonna be a lot of healing. So lean in and let's press in and see what God has for us. So if you're taking down notes, we're gonna start with a premarital blind spot. And uh, this is for all the, where's all the single people? Where are all the single people at? Come on, now keep it up, look around a little bit. All right. He likes he likes to say single and searching. So yeah, if you are and single searching. and searching, Just, then you, you can look around. should have kept it up. Yeah, should have kept it up. <laughs> guy in the back has two hands and a foot lifted. He's like, I like long walks on the beach. Okay, so premarital blind spot number one. This is, we're, we're gonna give it to you and then we'll give you a goal. So the first one is love will complete me. Ooh, so this is the blind spot that we're gonna cover right out of the gate. And that is, how many of you... So how many of you like Hallmark movies? Oh, yeah. Anybody what? here? Come on, you can raise your hand. It's all right, there's no shame. There's not a guy there's lifting no their I hand. I love Hallmark <laughs> movies. I love it. There are I give a bone to pick with Hallmark though. Okay. And like 90% like of the ladies are gonna be like, be, just because, why in July do we do like Christmas <laughs> Hallmarks? Like it's 193 degrees in Houston. <laughs> like I'm putting deodorant behind my knees. And that y'all are inside like, drinking hot chocolate, watching uh, Hallmark movies. I think that's a personal problem, but that's okay. Okay. All right. It's okay, because right. it's true. Maybe Christmas in July is a little too soon, but yes. we all, whether or not you raised your hand or not, you love the way that a good Hallmark movie makes you feel. But it's the same yeah. actors. It's, it's true. The same that's okay. People. We can look past that, too. In every movie. That's okay, because Hallmark movies make you feel like love just fixes everything, yeah. right? They make you feel like it's all gonna be great because love will just 
fix it all. But unfortunately, the blind spot we're talking about this morning is that love from a person does not fix everything. And no matter how wonderful that person is that you are in relationship with or that you want to be in relationship with, no matter how great the relationship is, there will be times where that person will let you down. And if all of your wholeness comes from the behaviors and the actions of a fallible person, that means a person that is capable of making mistakes, if all of your wholeness comes from that, then you're going to ride the roller coaster of brokenness your whole life. Absolutely your whole life. Some of you in this room will enter into marriage with the hallmark ideas, like with the ideas of whimsy and butterflies and with so much excitement. I haven't and heard I, the word whimsy I love it. in a minute. I think it's awesome. <laughs> in my camo pants, I'm going to say whimsy. You can say okay? that. You look good, girl. Thanks. I like this whole vibe. Thanks, babe. <laughs> but I do. We want you to enter into relationships. One of our biggest pet peeves and frustrations in life is when we see a couple that's going to get married and they're like, yeah, we're getting married a couple days, no big deal. And we're like, what? This is the greatest day of the rest of your life. There should be excitement. So we're not saying that the whimsy and the butterflies are a bad thing, but we just want you to know that at some point, there will come a time when maybe those butterflies take a little bit of a vacation, and that's okay. It's not to say that they can't last a lifetime, because they can. Can I get anybody to yes, say amen? amen? I see some hands. All right, amen. It's rare, but it can happen. Yep. But then there are others of you that are going to come from divorced families, from histories of abuse, from, from um, loneliness and abandonment and failed relationships. And you might just enter into marriage really thinking that this is the person that's going to fix my broken heart. And as much as um, they might love you, they were never designed to complete you. Right. And I think that's a massive misconception. But the reality is you were designed. We were designed to be whole. That's right. And love does actually fix everything. But, but it's the love of the agape love from the Jesus. Right kind it's of the love, love from a That's father right. to a daughter or to a son. Right. I love what the Bible says in Colossians 2 verse 10. It says, and you are complete. That's the word we were talking about. Complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. And what this means is God's big enough and strong enough to handle any situation and everything that we walk through. Yeah. He's capable of delivering and healing and restoring even the most broken places. Right. And I also like a scripture in the book of Zephaniah. He always laughs at me when I reference the book of Zephaniah. Because nobody reads Zephaniah. Like I, <laughs> but if you're pregnant, this is a strong name. Like if you're like, oh, we're just on the fence. We were Any gonna go Zephaniahs with... in here? Anybody? Exactly. We need it. We need a little Zephs running around here. Like if you're writing, you should be like, maybe. I don't even know how to spell it, but I'm going to write it down. Amen. <laughs> So in the book of Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 13, there, verse 17, sorry, it says that the Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love, and he will exalt over you with loud singing. Not just like a little tune, but with loud singing. That means he is excited because of you. And that is the definition of a love that's capable of completing us. God will absolutely, hear us when we say this, he will absolutely use the right person to hand deliver some healing to your heart in the season that you need it, but do not get it confused that the source of your wholeness comes from a person because it came from the hand of God on purpose. And instead of seeking to find that soulmate to complete, complete you, you have to lean into the presence of God. Yeah. Be made complete and whole in him. That's why Matthew 6, is so important to seek first the kingdom out of God, to get in his presence, to really develop that relationship with him. Yeah. Let's give, let's give him one goal. Let's, okay. give, let's give him a goal to, to walk away with. So for this blind spot, our goal number one is to, and write this down if you have an opportunity, is to allow the love of Jesus to complete you before you let someone else take his place in your heart. That's great. Really that's good one. one. All right, let's move on to pre-marriage blind spot number two. The people I respect don't think we are ready for marriage, yeah. but they don't know our relationship like we do. Oh. Okay, blind spot, okay? Y'all see in the blind spots as they're developing a little bit of a blind spot there, right? Because this is a really challenging one for the person that's in the relationship. 
but it's a little bit more simple for a biblical, from a biblical wisdom yeah. perspective. Um, because the truth of the matter is that if the wise counsel in your life, the people that you respect, the people that you positioned in your life for such a time as this, for a moment needing correction or a moment of conflict, moment needing decisions to be made, if the people that you positioned, if they don't endorse the relationship or if they do not give their stamp of approval, then please stop and listen. Stop and listen for a minute. There is a difference between a pause button and a stop button. You can do either, but either way, listen. Proverbs 19 verse 20 says, listen to advice and accept instruction that you may gain wisdom in the future. And there's a reason why God places these type of relationships in our lives. Like we say it all the time here, life moves at the speed of relationships. There's a reason why God aligns wiser more seasoned, perceptive people in our lives that maybe have been listening to the Holy Spirit and the Lord longer than you and may be able to see something in you that you have too much familiarity and you, you're too close to the situation to see. So accountability is huge. I, I love uh, Hebrews 13, 17, one of my favorite verses says, uh, to have confidence in your leaders or the ones that you've allowed to speak in your life as those who must give and accounts. I remember, uh, so I'm not gonna say I dated a lot of girls. I dated quite a few girls. And so um, <laughs> throughout college, we're not gonna talk about that right now. Um, I've, I got the best one, or she, like she's brilliant, I'm the eye candy. We're moving on, we're not gonna talk about that. Um, but I remember when, we, when I was dating, and my mom would say, well, I wanna meet, I wanna meet whoever you're dating. Because my mom was in my life, she was a prayer warrior, she was praying, she's like, I've already prayed, I've already, you're wasting your time. I've already prayed the right one, the one that's connected to your assignment. I'm like, you need to take it easy, Barbara. And so <laughs> she's like, you call me by my first name. And so I remember taking girls by. We'd be eating dinner. My mom would say, it's so nice to meet you. Just go down the hallway there and wash your hands before we eat. Why are you bringing this? Why are you wasting our time? <laughs> you know, I don't want hussies at my house. I'm like, I don't even know what a hussy is. She's like, you know what a hussy is. You brought a hussy. <laughs> to dinner, y'all eat and you go. And I'm like, and then we had a dog named Pierre and I came back this theologically, but I think one of the demons that got loosed into the pigs was in this dog. Like he was demon possessed and he would attack every girl that I would bring by, except one. Impossible right here. Um, when I brought Jackie home. So he my, wasn't so demonic after all, right? He loved, he loved Jackie and my mom hugged her and she opened her eyes and looked at me and goes, I like this one. <laughs> and my mom had been saying, listen, don't make a mistake by just jumping into something premature, but seek God first on it. So Wise good. counsel. Let's give him another goal. He listened. He listened. And one thing I want to say before we give you that last goal is if before this moment, if before this moment that you respected the wisdom of the people like his mother in your life, if you respected it so much in the moment before they corrected you, don't be deceived into changing your opinion because you didn't like the advice that they gave so in the moment. That's a good word. It's really important. So right, goal, goal. goal number two then is submit yourself. Submit, that's a big word. It's a choice. Submit yourself to wise mentors and allow yourself to be challenged by their wisdom. You can apply that to any season of your life, whether or not you are single and searching or not. That's great. All right, let's give them another one. Third one, pre-marriage uh, blind spot. Here we go. I'm not perfect, this is a big one, so I don't expect the person I'm dating to be either. Mm. I'm not perfect, so the person I'm dating, I don't need them to be perfect, right? That's right. So the thing about, the, about blind spots is that there's always like a hair of truth, right? Like the hair of truth is you're not perfect. It's true, very true. But the part that is the part you can't see is the part that you would settle for someone that is also not in a season that they should be in. Because a lot of the time people hope that they can just grow together. Like, that sounds fun, this will be great. Because not to say that you don't grow together in marriage. I mean, right, you right. grow a lot in marriage. You go through a whole lot of seasons. But in the areas of necessity before marriage, that's character, compatibility, purpose. If you're single, hear me on those. Character, compatibility, purpose, just to name a few. Um, you should aim for a person that makes you stronger, not dims your light that's great. at all. That's good. Because the thing about it is, if you think about it like this, if you, are, if you are needing to find a new outfit or you're looking for some kind of garment or clothing or whatever, you do not go directly to the seamstress and buy their thread, right? 
That's a whole word. No, you do not. You go to the department store or to a boutique and you buy the finished garment. You do not buy the thread individually. You get the garment when it's when it's ready, at least ready to be wearable. You don't have to buy the most expensive garment, but you buy a garment that's completed for the most part. So good. It's, it's like going to a farmer and buying the seed directly from the soil. Yeah. Like we go to the H-E-B or the Kroger and we purchase or buy, somebody, I said Kroger, she said no. Okay, <laughs> A-H-E-B, my God, take it easy. <laughs> we go directly to the store and purchase the fruit that grew from the seed. And the reason for that is because we understand the importance of development before investment. Wow, that's good. We understand that so much when it comes to so many areas of life. If you are business people in this room, yeah, I'm speaking your language. Development before investment, that's a big deal, right? But sometimes, for some reason, when it comes to relationships, the commitments that are supposed to last us a lifetime, right? We want to rush. We don't want to wait on it. We want to hurry it up and speed up the process and get to that season. And we have to be really careful to, to, to not rush it because if you rush it, you'll ruin it. That's right. We have this saying a lot that if, if you're rushing it and you're going to mess it up and you're going to get in the way, you should pause, you should pray, and you should be patient. The Bible says in Philippians 4, verse 6, I love the Amplified, it says, do not be anxious or worry about anything, but in everything, every circumstance, in situation, by prayer and petition, and thanksgiving, continue to make your specific requests known to God. Don't rush it. Yeah, that's so good. It's so good because if you're not careful, you will be left with a baby little seedling for a lifetime that you just plucked right out of the ground and then you carried along or for your whole life, right? Just piled up thread instead of, yeah, that's good. Because you're making an investment when it comes to selecting your spouse and you are that investment because it's your future your purpose, your future children. That's great. So don't rush it. Choose wisely and be stronger than your strongest excuse and then ultimately be proud of your choice. So good. Let's give them another goal, number so three. So good. Goal number three is work on, this is a good one, y'all, work on becoming a person that you're proud of so that you can choose someone you admire. That's so good. Somebody good. should shout, say amen. Yeah. So we just wrapped up our pre-marital ones. Let's move into some marital Blind spots. Where's all the married people at? Come on. All right. All right. Our first marital blind spot. Here it is. You know me and you love me, so you should know what I want and what I'm thinking right now. We can just let that simmer for a second, right? Simmer. As you nudge the person next to you and you're like... Guys, we're already hey. out on this one. We're like, this is not possible. So how many of you married folks would love the ability to read minds? Huh? Right? That would work out really well. Be can, super helpful. You can read my mind. Well, that's just yours. Not all minds. I can't read all minds. <laughs> but sometimes. You can, though. All right, anyways, keep moving. That's, that's a different topic. But the truth is, it's just not going to happen. We're never going to have the ability to read minds. And as silly as it sounds, for me to even ask if we'd all like to be able to read minds, it's the same kind of silly to assume that your spouse will know what you want without you communicating it. And it's unfair. It's Honestly, unfair. it's not a fair approach. It is. It's unfair to assume that somebody, if you think about it like this, who was biologically and chemically created to think differently, to reason differently, to process differently, to love differently, to assume that that person could even possibly know what you're thinking without you verbalizing it. And I know it, it, it does get frustrating when you feel like you have to say it a hundred thousand times. But the reality yeah. is we have to learn to value our differences as men and women because God made us different so that we could complement each other uh, yeah. and, and offer strengths to weaknesses and, and, and honestly humbly serve each other. I love what Paul says in Ephesians 5.22. It says, wives, be willing to serve your husband as the same as the Lord. Verse 25 says, husbands, love your wives as the same as Christ loved the church. Here's the reality. There's two things specifically in the Bible that, that God ordained, church and marriage. Marriage is very near and dear to the heart of God. And just like you have feelings, so does your spouse. They just look differently. So true. And we are not giving anyone a license to not listen or not pay attention, FYI, just so we all know. Like, I heard it week one. I don't have to listen to <laughs> 
my girlfriend said, uh, or my wife said, or my husband said, I don't feel like you're paying attention. At least I think that's what she said. I wasn't listening. Like, that's not okay. Like, that's not, that's not what we're doing. No, but what we are talking about is thinking that if you do not communicate, yeah. that you will have the right to be annoyed and frustrated. Right. Because in order to truly value someone with the same value that you want to be valued with, you have to choose to, number one, it's a big one, Show understanding of their perspective, even if you don't understand it. That's good. Okay? You may not ever understand your spouse's perspective. That's okay. I'm telling you right now. You may not ever really get where they come from. But the important thing is that you show understanding that they have a different perspective than you. And they're not just trying to be mean or unloving. That's great. Okay? Number two, communicate your heart from your heart. That means in love, without anger, without pride, without selfishness. Because James 1.19, which is marriage, marriage gold, says, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to what? Quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. And we are supposed to communicate in that spirit. So good. You always say the what? Think. Uh, you have to think twice and speak once. A lot of times we are quick to say things, quick we have to think about it, process it, think twice and speak once. I love what Psalms 19, 14 says. This is, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Pleasing, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. So in other words, we have to use our words. Because the purpose of communication, the purpose of saying what you are thinking is not to get what you want, okay? It is to become more unified That's great. as a couple in a relationship in a healthy way. Right, so number four, write this down. Goal number four. It's to communicate your heart to your spouse. This one might be easier to just listen to. With grace and receive their perspective with understanding. So good. I think it's up on the screen. Okay, awesome. All right, let's move on to another marriage blind spot. Here we go. This one's, this one's loaded. Uh, kids will keep us together. Yeah. Oh, and all with the children laugh. Kids will keep us together. So we're big advocates of big families. We, we have, have we four, four kiddos. Yeah. And, a, are, and a golden doodle. That's true. Yes, four and a kind of half. Four and like five a, I just think she's like a, a, a human dressed up. You ever seen that show Alf? <laughs> she does look like Alf. She looks like Alf. Yeah. I'm like, you're a real human being in a dog suit. Okay, keep going. So we love children. They're, they're pretty amazing. Um, but there is this misconception amongst young marrieds that are on a rocky ground in their marriage that if, if maybe we just have kids now, this, will, this could maybe fix our, our problems and draw us closer and help us have a closer bond. And a lot of the time, people don't even like say that out loud. It's another one of those things that they're kind of thinking. They're like, ooh, maybe this would be a good fix for us. Yeah. But unfortunately, it's, it's quite the opposite because for those of you that snickered in here, you know that to parent children, there is a massive amount of unity and grace that is required. And having children as a fix will only magnify the unresolved issues in your relationship. And, and the truth is, seasons of parenting, the newborn season, it doesn't bring the best out in us. You growl, like all four kids, you growled at me, like early on, like it's true, like it's. I don't know, I might have blacked out at that point, I was tired. <laughs> that's valid, that's, that's true. Who knows though, it could have been true, it might have been true, I don't know, but <laughs> being parents is a messy job and you have to be it's on true. the same page. I mean, the things that I have found in my hair and in his beard over the years. I've literally said, is that chocolate or poop? What's on your hand right there? Is it chocolate or is that poop? Like, it's, it's messy. This is parent. <laughs> We're it's giving true. you pearls here. That's true. You never know. But what parenting does is it exposes another layer of expectations that you had for your spouse that maybe you didn't even know you had. And sometimes we hold against them the expectations that we never even knew were in our own head or in our own heart. And if your relationship is already in a tangled up place, and having children to try and fix the distance between the two of you will only add to what feels like dysfunction in your marriage. And I think we should, but there are some outlets and there are some fixes to maybe someone that's in this season of life. And we were talking about some of the outlets last night. We're not talking about outlets. Some of you are like, I've been to the outlet. 
It's a polo store. Not I never like buy polo, but I hit it in the, the, wall. I at the outlet. Right. Yeah, right. But there right. are some outlets. Let's talk about a few of those for so just mental peace and strength. Yeah, there are some, some not easy and not quick, but some simple fixes that you can make to adjust if you are already in a rough spot and you don't even have kids yet. Um, so the first one is to, to find your outlets in right? life. That's one. Like, He's right. It is one. It is technically one. <laughs> find the things that bring you personally. Yeah mental peace where you can find an opportunity to just kind of step back. So golfing would be an example. We've got spa days, exercise. I love my Peloton. My Peloton is my friend. I do a thing called sit and be fit. Mm. I'm literally working out right now. Yeah. Like I was moving my legs a second ago and that was a calf workout. So good. I feel good about it. So sit and be fit's on the list. It's on my list. Put it on your list, everybody. Um, if you'd like, it's very effective. Um, okay. There's Bible studies, hiking, whatever it is that is your outlet. Take a walk with your dog, but finding those right now will help relieve some of the pressure in your marriage. And they teach you how to learn to clear your head, clear your own head, not expect someone else to clear your head. Find a better perspective, recharge, and most importantly, behave Christ like with one another, because that is ultimately the goal. So pray, step back and pray. That's good. And we also have to learn to celebrate wins more often. Yeah. Like we have to celebrate the wins in each other's lives that strengthen each other. Another one, because I think this is a massively loaded misconception, uh, y'all, it, counseling is a good thing. And a lot of times people think that, that self-help is selfish or we're not going through enough drama to get counseling. We do premarital for counselors and there's, or for couples and there's always one person that'll be like, well, why do we need counseling? We're not messed up yet. The truth is it helps uh, kind of uh, uh, identify some areas that could be blind spots, blind spots moving forward. So we're, we're big proponents of it. It is, it's true. Because just like say you were driving down the the road and you saw a house on fire, you would not sit there and wait until the house was completely burned to the ground before you would call the fire department, right? Nobody hopefully would raise their hand and say, I would do that. You would see first signs of a fire, first signs of trouble, and you would immediately call out for help. So the same is true when it comes to asking for help. And also don't allow your pride to keep you. Be stronger than your strongest excuse and don't allow your pride to keep you from taking a step towards ultimately the family you desire. All right, let's give them another goal. So grow healthy together. Number five is grow healthy together before you grow your family. All right, so here's another marriage blind spot. Taking down notes. This one is huge. It's okay to window shop. I'm not making any purchases. Now, instantly, some of you are like, well, that's, I don't have any money right now. All I'm doing is window <laughs> shopping. Y'all, I'm not talking about walking by Prada and Alexander McQueen's and Valentino and being like, no. I need to. No, no, I'm talking about guarding your gates. That's right. We are talking about checking out things that are not part of your marriage. We are talking about admiring with your eyes things that you probably should be admiring over here. And the problem with that is, again, it's a gate issue. And the reality is there's this kind of... Uh, this underlying problem that says, well, as long as I don't touch, as long as I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not having an affair, so it's not that big of a deal. But here's the reality. 17 years ago, I, I, I got into a covenant with her. And when we got married, my dad before Jesus was a mess, cheating on my mom all the time. It was a mess. But when he gave his life to the Lord, he told my brother and I, you guard your eyes. You, you fix your eyes on the gift that God gave you. And for me, uh, it, it's, it's, it, it's almost an act of betrayal to just, I, and I, I'm, I'm passionate about that. I'll cut people off. We're eating lunch and they'll be like, are you good? Well, who are you just looking at? Not your wife. Amen. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, because it used to be that it was just guys, but now it's ladies as well. Y'all, we have to guard our gates. And guarding our gates is a, it's a really important one because Matthew 6, says the lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, then your whole body will be full of light. So whatever it is that you choose to let in, whatever it is that you choose to focus on, whatever it is that you choose to listen will affect every single aspect of your demeanor, faith, countenance, attitude, relationship. So you have to guard what you are intentionally putting in. It's your choice. And it also, we were talking about seeds earlier, it also plants seeds uh, that were never supposed to be planted. And you'll live in a harvest 
that you were never supposed to live in. And I think it's really important. Here's another reality um, in planting seeds. Uh, uh, that it also unlocks, well, we were talking about last night. Talk about that real quick, about distrust. and. Yeah, it plants seeds not only in your own life that you don't wanna harvest on, but it also plants seeds in your spouse's life. Because yeah. when you are looking away and you don't know it, they see you. And they instantly have a response to that. And their response typically plant seeds of distrust and insecurity that say, well, why was I not good enough? Was I not pretty enough? Did, I, did he not like this? Did he not like my camo pants? Like, <laughs> why? why? What did I do wrong? Yeah. And those are also seeds that not only is that simple look, not only is it affecting you, but it's also affecting your, your spouse. And here's the reality. There are, there are no new tricks of the enemy. He, he's not duping us with new tricks and ideas. There's no new demon factories creating uh, 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 traps and, and issues. No, it's the same tricks in the enemy that trapped David with Bathsheba, come on, Samson with Delilah. And so it's so important to guard our gates. The Bible says in Proverbs 4, 23, that above all else, it says guard your heart. You can write that down in your notes. Guard my gates above all else for everything you do flows from it. Here's the reality. Temptation in itself is not a sin. A lot of times we're like, I'm being so tempted. Temptation in itself is not a sin. It's what you do with that temptation. Let's give him another goal. That's good. So goal number six is value your spouse by choosing to look only in their direction. All right, another Guard marriage blind spot. Let's grab it. My husband, my wife is my rock. And again, this is a good one because you're like, ah, a lot of people in the room are like, yeah, hashtag relationship goals. That's what I want. I want my, my husband to be my rock. Yep. I want my wife to be my rock. But unfortunately, that's wrong thinking. And I'll tell you why. We are not telling you that having a healthy, happy, fun-loving, stable, trustworthy relationship is not something to aim for because it absolutely is. But because I can, I can come to this guy with anything. I can trust him with anything. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that he has my back. He will listen. I would take 15 bullets for That's him. A lot. That's a lot of bullets. He, maybe he would take one, I and guess. A, one might be enough. A couple on a paintball gun or something. But, but the point is, is the point is that he's wonderful and we have a really great, a strong, he's my, he's okay. my buddy. Um, and he is so kind to me as his wife and as a woman. Um, but at the end of every day, he's still a human and as I, and he's gonna have his off days and he's not gonna have an answer for every single thing that I need or know exactly how to handle every emotion that I'm feeling. I can lean on him for the everyday stuff, but if I stand on him with the full weight of every solution that I need and every bit of joy that I'm looking for and every fire that I need put out, he will most likely break under that pressure, no matter how strong he is. Because the promises of God don't break when we lean on them. Right. But if we lean on our spouses too much, they will break. The Bible says in Psalms 18, verse two, the Lord is my solid rock. Like he has to be the foundation and the rock of all of it. Let's give him a goal, number seven. So goal number seven is turn to God for your solutions and enjoy the benefits of peace with your spouse. That's great. Peace. So we have one last one as we bring this in for a landing. And this one is gonna be a little bit more heavy, but we believe from a supernatural perspective, no matter where you're at currently in your journey of relationship, that God can heal you. And this is called the hurting blind spot. And this is the loaded one. It's too late for me. Maybe you're here and maybe you're watching and you're like, it's too late for me. Like this whole relationship series is actually hard for me. This is too late for me. That's right. Can we unpack that for just a couple? Yeah. Because maybe you are on the other side. You know, we've talked about the season of singleness and we've talked about the season of marriage, but maybe you're on the other side of, of a relationship that didn't work or multiple relationships that left you broken. Or maybe you have not yet gotten to the marriage phase and you have been praying for a really, really, really long time and you are being tempted to believe the lie that it's too late for you. The enemy wants nothing more than for you to believe that if that person couldn't love me or if those people were not interested in me or if that person couldn't have handled my heart a little bit better, then no one ever will. And he wants you to believe that you are a failure. He wants you to absolutely think that it's you. But the truth is that you may have walked through something that did not succeed, but failure does not define so you. So good. 
Yeah. And we want you to hear that in here this morning. Failure does not define you. As Christ followers, we identify only with the redemption and the grace and the love and the mercy of Jesus that gives us the strength to believe again, to trust again, to hope again. But the way that we go about it in the next season of life is we put our hope in Jesus. Put our hope in Jesus and not in people. One of my favorite verses, Isaiah chapter 43, verse 19, it says this, I'm doing a new thing. Just think about that. I'm doing a new thing, says the Lord, and now it springs up. And then this question is asked, do you not see it? The only way we don't see it is if we get in the way. The only way we don't see it is if we allow that hurt and that insecurity to block our view from what God is doing. It says, I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. So give them the last goal, goal number eight. Goal number eight is surrender your hurts so you can receive your freedom from the pain. Surrender those hurts because it's never too late with Jesus. There's breath in your lungs. It's never too late. That's so good. Jackie, I want you to pray uh, just kind of general overall of what we just talked about today. And then specifically, let's pray for those who have been hurt and walking through. How many of y'all have been encouraged today? Awesome. Let's pray. Lord God, we just thank you. We thank you for every single person that is hearing this message, God. We ask that whatever season they are in in life, that they feel your peace this morning. They feel your peace and your courage and your strength, and they, they give up the discouragement, and they, they turn to the faith and the trust that you've got this, that if they put their hope in you and not in people, if they put their trust in your enduring fight for them, that you will absolutely get them to a place of victory. And we just thank you this morning, God, that you are such a good, merciful God. And we pray for health in relationships. We pray for health and perspectives. We pray for godly people to be guiding each and every single person in this room. We give you all the praise. We ask you to guide our relationships. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen.